Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky and we are heading out into the garden today. We are gonna do a full garden tour. A lot of things have changed since last time we were in the garden together. The garden is starting to kind of slow down and I'm starting to button up the garden for this year. So while we're doing the tour, I wanna go through kind of what was super successful, what my plans are for 2024 and what didn't do so well. Now first, my major success here is my pumpkins and they're looking really good. I harvested these pumpkins when they were still mostly green. These three pumpkins, actually all five of these pumpkins that have orange on them, those are the French pumpkin and they're curing beautifully outside. This one's almost completely cured. These two are almost completely cured and that's pretty exciting. I did just harvest these two Hubbard squash. So that is really encouraging. Before we head out into the garden, I wanna show you my pepper plants that I went ahead and harvested the whole plant. I removed all of the leaves. I removed about one third of the branches. I potted them up and I'm waiting to hear from you all what I should do with them. Should I put them inside my house next to a window or should I put them in the grow room under the grow lights on a timer? I'm trying to keep these plants alive all winter long in their dormant stage. And then come next year, these plants have a huge jump start to all the peppers. I'm gonna start from seed. Peppers don't have to be annuals, they are perennials if they're in a warm climate, but most of us don't grow in a warm enough climate to have them be perennials, so we have to plant them every year. So here I have two Tabasco peppers, and I think these two are my Tabasco peppers, I didn't label them. And then this is, I think, a Chinese five color pepper, but they're looking really good. They've been in this pot for a few days now, and it's still in the 50s at night, so I haven't brought them inside yet. I wanted to hear what your guys' suggestions were before I decide what I'm gonna do with them. The next thing here is I have two of, the only two that I have, my elderberry plants. These I started from cuttings from my friend from Row & Co Farm, and they have just exploded this year. I need to plant them out somewhere, but I'm not sure where I'm gonna plant them yet. This weekend, I think Josh and I are gonna go walk around the property and decide where we wanna put these two elderberry plants. And then I need to transplant my eucalyptus too. And I'm not sure where I'm gonna put that. So if you have any suggestions. I was thinking of putting my eucalyptus in my raised beds, but now I'm kind of thinking I might try to put it in my landscape, but we'll see, time will tell. I need to do that this weekend though. Fall is a great time to transplant because things start to go dormant, it rains a lot, and it's just a good time to plant them. The green stock is looking great. This is my fall green stock. I am loving the fall planting. I've been able to harvest cilantro off this. I've been able to harvest a lot of lettuce and my nasturtiums that I planted, my second round of nasturtiums are starting to bloom. Now, the one thing that didn't do so well are the beets up top. These I probably won't ever plant in the green stock again, but next year my plans for my green stocks is one, I want another flowered one. I want all my greens almost to be in the green stock because I like the fact that it's right off my kitchen door and on my patio, I'm more likely to grab it if it's right here. And I want an entire one of just herbs because when I'm cooking, I'm way more likely to run out to a green stalk on my patio than run all the way to the garden. I know it's not that much farther, but it is farther. And so I want all my herbs on my patio next year so that I use them even more than I did this year. Now this is looking great. Over here, we have more nasturtiums that I planted out as a second succession from seed that I had saved from the first round. We have some more Cosmos coming up. This is the fig tree that I took the cutting off from the last homestead and I need to transplant these two this weekend as well. And then this fig tree, I think, I think it died. So I'll probably transplant it, but I don't know if it's still alive. And then here I harvested, right here you can see, these are cone flowers. Oh, the seed's falling off. Or echinacea, and these are the seeds, and I want to save these and plant these next year. Cone flower or echinacea is a perennial, so I'm gonna transplant that into the landscape or into one of the raised beds come this fall as well. We started that plant together back in 2022 and this is the first time it's flowering because cone flower takes two years typically, on its second year it typically flowers, except for this one flower. I started this echinacea plant with you this year and it already flowered this year, which is really odd, but super awesome. And the flower I'm speaking of is this one right here. So I have one, 
two, three, four echinacea plants in this bed. But here, let's talk about this first. So huge changes since last time we were in the garden together. Let me bring you back to yesterday to see what these beds look like before all the tomato plants and pepper plants were removed. So here is kind of an overview of, as of yesterday morning, what these plant or these beds look like. They were lush and beautiful, but I knew that it was time to remove the tomato plants and pepper plants because frost was on its way. As of yesterday, when I'm talking to you, we officially had our first frost, and so it was time to harvest any of the peppers that were still left on the plants. Any good green tomatoes I saw, I grabbed those and some tomatillos. I also grabbed the cannellini beans. I planted these. I didn't have all of them germinate, so the harvest is pretty small, but we're gonna bring these inside and I'm either going to cook them up as dried cannellini beans or we will plant them next year and see if we can get a better harvest from next year. So before these beds were ripped, everything was ripped out. Here's what they're looking like. They had mostly tomatoes and onions, peppers and green beans and some cannellini beans in these beds. If you see green tomatoes and red tomatoes still on the vine, those were left behind except for a few that were still good because they were cracked and they just weren't going to be good inside or the red ones were cracked and moldy. But here is the before. One of my big goals for this garden season is to get these beds put to bed for winter. And if my, my goal is to have every single bed covered in landscape fabric and amended before winter hits. And we'll see if we can make that goal. I almost didn't rip out this tomato plant because it's still putting on flowers, but I have so many green tomatoes in my pantry that I know we'll be eating fresh tomatoes until probably late November. And so I did go ahead and decide to rip that plant out, but I was shocked that it was still putting on flowers. Here are some goodies for the chickens. I had some cabbages that were covered in aphids and I didn't feel like managing that. So I just thought the girls would enjoy some cabbages and some broccoli. So here they are enjoying that. And if I don't get every single bed covered, if I can reach my goal of say 80%, I'll be happy with that. But my goal is to put all the beds to bed. So here's kind of a pan again of before of just I am so in awe with how productive these tomato plants were for us this year. I'm blown away. So as of now, we're gonna go back to current time when all of these tomato plants and pepper plants are removed. So this is where we are now. There is no peppers or tomatoes in this garden anymore. Now this is still in here. I considered pulling this out because I just don't think we're gonna get any black beans from these plants before it frosts but I, I'm really disappointed if we don't. I really wanted to get some of these black beans off these plants because this is a vining or a pole bean. And one of my big goals next year is actually to plant pole beans along all of these trellises next year. I wanna go really big on planting beans, dried beans, because I just love growing them so incredibly much. So this is what this black bean bed is looking like now. I guess I did miss a couple of the tomato vines and that's okay, I will get those. We're gonna head over here and we've got still, the snapdragons are looking absolutely stunning. They are thriving better now than they were earlier because it's cooling off. And this bed is basically empty except for some random small onions, a kale plant that needs to go to the chickens. I probably should have done that yesterday but that's okay. And a couple of these beds are gonna look a little bit sad, but it just means that it's that time of year where we're going from a crazy busy season to a little less busy season. Here we have some lavender and some more snapdragons that are looking absolutely stunning. They're showing off this time of year. I need to come in here and clean up all these beds and finish cleaning them up and amending the beds. I did leave this one kale plant here this one needs to go to the chickens. It's pretty diseased and done. We will go to the chickens. I'm gonna harvest quite a few leaves today and we will head over to the chickens and give them some of these kale leaves. They love kale. Kale is one of the girls' favorite snacks. I'm not exactly sure why, but we will go give them some kale and watch them enjoy that. One reason I grew so much kale in the garden this year is so that I could supplement their diet and kale will last into the cooler months. 
so that I can continue to supplement their diet. One of you had given me the suggestion and I had thought about it, but never really seriously considered it until this year or until I read a comment about it, about preserving food for my girls because they're not free ranging anymore. And so that I could give them fresh greens and zucchini and things throughout the winter. And I'm gonna have to think more about that. I was thinking I could, when I get those huge zucchinis, cause I got so many last year, putting the entire zucchini in the freezer and then giving it to them frozen and they could pick at it, but then it'd be cold. And I don't know if that'd be weird. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe I should think about growing some winter squash for them like pumpkins and stuff so that they could have that and I could just cut that open. It would store in my basement for a couple months and throughout the fall and winter, they could have winter squash. Let me know if you guys have any experience with growing food for your chickens. So from this bed, I just, I, you're gonna see a theme that I've got a lot of cleanup to do. We've already started some of the big cleanup, which is getting the tomato plants and pepper plants out. But the main thing is I need to finish getting these onions out of here, but also I need to get all the landscape fabric up, amend the beds like I have if you've seen before. I put a couple bags of compost down, soil amendments, and then I'm gonna cover it with landscape fabric. I just ordered my landscape fabric. I think it's supposed to be here tomorrow so that I can finish that project. I really want to go into this fall and winter with this garden completely buttoned up. I wanna make sure that I am a good steward of this garden. And so by really taking the time to put the garden to bed, I think the garden will be grateful. And hopefully that means that next year we will have hopefully just as abundant of a year. This year has blown me out of the water how abundant it's been. These tomatoes, I am not gonna plant this many tomatoes next year. I grew enough tomatoes for Josh and I for a year. I grew enough tomatoes for my sister to put up tomatoes. I gave some to my mother-in-law. I gave some to my other neighbor. My mom and dad have been enjoying tomatoes out of this garden all summer. And I've been able to donate a bunch of tomatoes to my local community. And so the tomatoes have done fantastic. So I'm not gonna plant as many tomatoes next year because I wanna you know, experiment growing other crops. Here in this bed, this was tomatoes green beans and peppers and my tomatillos. This bed still needs some attention. These green beans were the contender green beans and I can pull these and save the seed to plant next year. They ha I have quite a bit more cleanup to do. I did leave the tomatillos because you can see all the tomatillos still on these plants. The plant isn't growing anymore. It's not putting on any more flowers because it's getting too cold at night to put on more flowers. But I figured since the plant itself looks so healthy, I don't see any signs of disease, I would leave this out here and see if I can get some of these tomatillos to plump up in size. Because everywhere where you see one of these little papers, that's a tomatillo, but they're still super small on the inside. And so I wanna see if I can get them to fill out these papers and I can still get a good harvest off of them. So I made the executive decision to go ahead and leave that until we get frost or until the plant dies. And I will see if I can keep harvesting tomatillos. Now this bed, the tomatoes did fantastic. I had some sugar rush peach peppers over here and they did really well. But in here, I planted way too many things too close together. I had way too many peppers in this bed with green beans around it. And I don't think I gave each plant enough room to really thrive. So next year, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna give the plants a little bit more extra room. Same with these onions and the peppers in this bed that we just looked at. I had pepper plants between each one of these onion rows and I think they were just competing for too much space and nutrients. My peppers did not do fantastic this year. We had enough peppers to enjoy them all summer long. I did was able to put up quite a bit of hot sauce from our own peppers. And I was able to put up, I think, three or four quart bags of diced bell peppers, but that's not enough for a year for Josh and I. And I don't think the onions got super big in this bed and the peppers didn't do super well. Both of them were just competing for nutrients. So I'm not gonna do this again where I crowd out my pepper plants. Next year, I'm gonna devote probably four or five beds to peppers alone. And I'm gonna give them the space they need to hopefully produce a little bit more fruit for us. Another thing I learned is that we need more than two tomatillo plants. I think I had four tomatillo plants here, actually not two, but that's not enough for us. So I'm gonna do one entire trellis, not on this back one. I think I'm gonna put my tomatoes and tomatillos on this row down here next year. 
and I'm gonna do one entire trellis of tomatillos because we love tomatillos in this house and I did not grow quite enough this year. I think I have three gallon bags in the freezer that are ready for me to turn into salsa verde and hopefully we get a few more. So that's probably not quite enough for Josh and I to get an entire year worth of salsa verde because we love it. But I was able to put up, I think four half pint jars of tomatillo jalapeno hot sauce, which is good. From that bed, we're coming down here. This bed is basically completely empty. This had our melons on this side, a bunch of winter squash on that side. I have some bags of compost and manure to amend the bed when I get out to do that. And then there are some zinnias that are dead for the year and I just need to clean that out when I amend this bed. Over here, this bed is looking really beautiful and I'm gonna leave this kale in this bed all fall and winter for Josh and I and for the chickens. We've got some zinnias that are ready to come out. And then I have one of my eucalyptus plants here and I'm gonna leave this here and see if it will overwinter but I do need to come out and clean up the zinnias and the calendula flowers. I'm also gonna leave the parsley and thyme on this end of the bed. Parsley will come back the next year, but it will go to seed quickly and the thyme is a perennial in my area. This will come back year after year after year. Parsley is what is considered a biannual, so next year when it comes back, it will go to seed pretty quickly, but I should be able to get a harvest off of it in the early spring. The time I'm gonna leave here, I'm probably, this is the time we started together back in March from seed. So that's a huge accomplishment. I think I am going to get some flower pots up on the patio and I'm gonna do a couple herb pots with thyme and sage and some other, some herbs. I want really all my herbs up on the patio so that again, I'm more likely to grab it. If I'm in the middle of cooking dinner and I want a few sprigs of thyme, I'm much more likely to go to the patio to grab it than want to run all the way down here, especially in the fall and winter when it starts raining a ton, I'm less likely <laughs> to want to come down here and get my time. I also have sage you'll see in a minute and some rosemary. So this winter, if it's raining, I'm not gonna to want to come down here. <laughs> have I said that enough? So let's go to this bed. This bed is still looking absolutely beautiful. We did a second round of carrots here and I can already see right here these carrots are looking so beautiful, but I think I'm gonna keep all these carrots in the ground and I'm gonna see if I can overwinter them as an experiment. I think it's way too cold here. We are much colder here than we were at our last homestead. I successfully overwintered carrots at my last homestead. I harvested them in February and they did fine, but our ground really freezes here. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to overwinter them. I need to get some straw and put some straw or something over them to keep them from possibly freezing, but we'll see. I might harvest some of those and I don't know, we'll see. The cabbage here is looking great, this red cabbage. I can harvest any time. I'm just leaving it out here because once I harvest it, I will need to probably deal with it. So I'm gonna leave it out here. These are the cabbage plants we harvested from earlier and I just never got out here and cleaned up these beds. This plant is starting to go to flower. I'm letting these cabbages go to flower because I've never seen a cabbage flower before and I'm curious, they look kind of awful right now, but I'm really curious what a cabbage flower looks like. And so I'm just letting that go and we are gonna see together what that looks like because I'll show you when it flowers. And then I showed you this last time we were in the garden. This is where I harvested a cabbage all the way down, but I left the, the leaf or the stem in the ground and it put off these four cabbage shoots, which I think is kind of interesting. Here we have three Brussels sprout plants. I don't think those are gonna produce anything before the end of fall. And then these are some cabbages that I had harvested from and I never cleaned this bed up. But I'm really happy with how this bed is looking even though there's some <laughs> kind of Frankenstein looking things happening in the middle. From there, we're gonna come to this bed and this bed has a lot of stuff happening in it. Here I have some red cabbages. Some of them I've already harvested from. The plants are just living and some I need to harvest from. We had cilantro go to seed all the way on this outside edge and I harvested all of that for the seed except for it looks like I missed a few, but that's okay. And I'm gonna use that cilantro seed to plant next year. Here in this section, I had planted this whole section, I'd probably planted about 40, oh my goodness, look at that. I did not bring a basket out here because I didn't really think there was gonna be anything to harvest. 
but that just might be our last cucumber of the year. We'll set that next to our carrot and I'll come back for that. Don't let me forget it. But in this section from here to there, I had planted about 40 pinto bean seeds. Three of them germinated. I went back, I planted probably 40 more, no more germinated, so I think the seed was bad but I was able over last weekend to harvest those plants that did germinate. There's seed pods in there. I'll show them to you when we get back to the seed room, but I'm gonna take those pinto beans and plant them next year in the garden. Hopefully those seeds do better for me because they actually grew in my garden. And so I harvested those. We have more carrots here. These are a second succession. They should be about the same stage as the one I just harvested. And then these are right here, my blue lake bush beans, and they are coming to an end. So I'm just letting them go to seed and I'm gonna harvest the seed and plant it next year. From there, this was the zucchini bed and it is done for the year. I need to come and remove all of these sad looking sunflowers but this bed is all done. The cilantro is finally going to seed over there. This was cilantro we were able to harvest from all year because it's on the south side of this bed. And that allowed for it to be in the shade during the heat of the summer. And so the cilantro did not bolt. So I was able to harvest from it all year. So now we're in this bed. This is a fall planting bed. In the back, I planted some Oregon snow peas and those are looking fantastic. Here I planted some green onions and they're looking great. And I planted them where I had the black beans and you can see there are some weeds coming up around. I'm gonna have to get in there and really get the root out of there. But you can see where the landscape fabric has holes and there's nothing planted weeds want to come up. So I do need to cover the rest of this bed with landscape fabric because I do not want weeds getting established in my beds. This is actually a snapdragon right there. And these are my snapdragons. I cut them off all the way at the ground and they're bouncing back. I think these are going to do really well this fall. One thing I want to do next year. Oh, that was a hummingbird. I think one thing I want to do next year is have a few beds, probably two or three or four, that are purely flowers. Imagine an entire bed of snapdragons, an entire bed of, I don't know, <laughs> just one whole bed cascading, say, say it was nasturtiums on one side, like the front side of the bed, the nasturtiums are growing down into the walkways. I have something like sunflowers that are tall in the back side of the bed, and then in the middle I have medium flowers, like all snapdragons. How beautiful would that be? I'm growing more flowers next year. <laughs> Coming down from that bed, speaking of flowers, I've got some zinnias here. I have collected a bunch of these heads. I've just gone like that, brought them inside, and the seeds are in the inside here. Let me show you. If you pull away, well, this one's not quite dry enough. Once it dries, it would be like that, but let me grab one that's dry. This one I think is a better candidate. So these right here at the end of the petal, that is the seed. So if I just stick these in my grow room, they'll dry out and I'll be able to collect the seed from them. So from that bed, we have our fall bed and this has this broccoli rob and it keeps bolting on me. So I could probably harvest this one. And I think that's perfect. But this is the first one I've been able to harvest because they keep going to flower on me so quickly. I think I could harvest this one too. And that still probably would not be quite bitter yet, but we'll try it, I'll bring it inside. But it hasn't done super well because I think I planted it when it was still too warm for it. And then here we must have forgot a potato. This was the potato bed and we have a new potato starting to grow. The cilantro though in this bed is thriving. This is all cilantro and it is just stunning. I was gonna give it a couple more days and then I'm gonna come out and mow it all the way down, freeze dry it, and then let it continue to grow throughout the fall. Here we have a cabbage. I had three more cabbages right here. And then we have the cauliflower. The cauliflower is looking so beautiful. I don't think I've ever grown such beautiful cauliflower before. So I'm hoping this does really well. And around the cauliflower, we have lettuce and that's doing really well. Well, no, I had six, I think I had six cabbages. My six cabbages, five of them were decimated by aphids. So I picked those out the other day, yesterday actually, 
I think it was yesterday. <laughs> My days are kind of blurred together. I picked it out and I threw it to the chickens. I let the chickens enjoy the aphids. I let the chickens enjoy the cabbage leaves. And I still have one though that might produce a fall cabbage for me. But this plan of using this cilantro as landscape fabric or weed barrier seems to be doing the trick pretty well. So I'm thrilled with the results on that. That's an experiment that I learned when I went to HOA last year. I didn't go this year and it seems to be working pretty well. From these two beds we were just in, we're gonna head to this bed here. This had all of the Roma tomatoes in it and the celery. The celery is coming back for a second round and it looks really good. I pulled all the tomatoes out of here and everything out of here except for the celery. So it's just an empty bed basically except the celery. I've got some compost and manure. I need to amend the bed and then I'm gonna put it to bed, cover it for the year. But I'm gonna leave the celery in here as long as it wants. I've been harvesting it for fresh eating. Celery can withstand temperatures down to 28 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put the Celsius right here. And so I'm just gonna let the celery hang out here. I've been harvesting on it for when I'm cooking. All the celery that I preserved in the freezer, I'm leaving on the freezer until this celery is completely done. I wanna show you this right here. I find these all over my garden. And what this is, is this is a sunflower head. The squirrels, I think it's squirrels that are doing it. We're cutting off, you can see right on this one, they cut off the head of the sunflower and then they carry this off and they eat the seed and they usually leave some remnants behind. And I'm okay if the squirrels get a few snacks out of my garden. Now here, this bed is done. This bed is done. There are some onions that I can harvest for green onions, but this was one of the pumpkin beds. I have this pumpkin bed that I forgot to grab, so I need to grab that. I need to amend this bed but it's basically done for the year. I need to get it put back to bed for the year. Coming, oh my goodness, this is not super great, I don't think. Okay, I need to read what to do. This is my garlic bed. I've got four different varieties of garlic. No, I have five different varieties of gar garlic. I have white north here, and it looks like they sprouted. Okay, and then here, and that looks like it's sprouted too right there. This one is Rocambole. It's an Amish variety. It's a hard neck. Here I have elephant garlic, Sicilian soft neck, and another soft neck here. And then I still need to plant this side of the bed out. Oh goodness. I see garlic right here too. Okay. So I have never had that happen before where I plant the garlic in October and then it sprouts before winter sets in. <laughs> I planted it at the proper depth, so I'm probably going to need to get some straw, heavily mulch it. Let me know if you have experience with that. Normally when I plant my garlic, I don't see it until spring. So, that's odd. I'm gonna have to do some research tonight. And I still will plant this out with garlic, but I'm just not sure what garlic I'm gonna plant there yet. Up here, this is the bed that still has quite a few things in it, but most of them are dying. We've got our straw flowers here. I've collected seed from these so that I can plant them next year. I have taken this plant and chopped it all the way off a few times and let it regrow. And I think that's really helped the longevity of this plant. I think these are so pretty. I think the coolest thing about them is their sound. My goal next year with my soft neck varieties of garlic is to actually braid in some of the straw flower because like its name, it's like straw, it's super dry and it keeps its color really well. So I want to have some if I can, some really beautiful braids of soft nut garlic with straw flower in them. I have one of my eucalyptus plants here that's looking really good. This was cucumbers and peppers. The peppers are done for the year. My cucumbers are dying. I need to come out here and just clean it. My second succession of zucchini, they're looking pretty sad. I need to just clean those up. Here you can see, I might get a couple more zucchini off those plants but these cucumber plants are done. They just need to come out. This topanchino, I'm gonna harvest in a little bit. I'm just gonna leave it out here. And look what I just found. This might be bitter, and if it is, it'll end up going to the chickens. I'll set that there until we go to the chickens. Over here, we have our corn patch and zinnias. I need to clean this bed out too. It's done for the year. I have already amended this bed. This was the carrot and onion bed. I've amended this carrot and onion bed. I just need to cover it with landscape fabric. 
and I'm waiting for that to come in the mail. Should be here tomorrow. Here, we've got a sage plant that I wanna transplant up to the patio next spring. And then we have cabbages. The cabbages are looking really well. I think we might get a fall harvest of cabbage. I wanna harvest some lettuce seed once these flower. And then I do have this blue Hubbard I need to harvest. This is done. Oh my goodness. <gasps> no, that was not there last time I was here. That's new, that's not good. That means that probably is rotten on the inside. So that might end up going to the chickens. I might just cut that in half and give that to the girls. Two Brussels sprout plants that look really bad. <laughs> they are covered in aphids and I don't think they're gonna produce anything. A new nasturtium plant that planted itself and rosemary I'm gonna transplant up to the patio this spring. So let's go grab a bunch of kale plants and go give it to the chickens. And then we're gonna to go to the old owner's garden bed. And I'm gonna talk with you about my plans for that area for next year. So I'm just gonna All right, let's go to the other garden. But one thing about the chickens for next year, we have big plans. One of our big plans for next year is to get the chickens up on this ridge. We wanna build a three or four times the size run they have now. We want it up on this ridge so that most of it will be, actually, probably one third will be out of the trees, out of the woods so that they get sunshine, all that. And then we wanna build a huge run down into the woods. This side of the property dips down a ton. It's not really useful, useful for Josh and I. So we're thinking we could give the chickens a huge run. We need to build them a new coop. Our coop is not functional. It's just, there's so many things that are wrong with it that next year chickens are a huge priority. We already have water over here. We have conduit so we can give them electricity if we need to. And that is a big goal for next year. But for now, I'm grateful for the run that we have for them so that they're not free ranging. I so miss my free ranged chickens, but I don't miss having my deck where we like to hang out as a family and I have friends over covered in chicken poo. I don't miss that at all. I, I, it was really embarrassing having people come over to our front porch and our front porch just being covered in chicken manure. <laughs> but I do miss them so much being around the garden and around the house, but where we're gonna put them, we'll still be able to enjoy them, like watch them from the patio. We'll be able to enjoy them from inside the house. They will just have a safer area. One reason I wanna put them in the, the woods is because we get a lot of snow up here and that'll keep an area that won't have so much snow and chickens don't really like snow. So anyway, that's a 2024 Goal. Now we're heading to the previous owner's garden because this is another 2024 goal area. Here is where the previous owner had their garden and it was mostly strawberries with some blueberry plants. And what happened, because a few of you guys had asked, what happened to the strawberries? How come we didn't see a strawberry harvest out of this garden? That's because I came out here one day and all the strawberry plants were decimated. They were literally eaten to the ground. No green left on them at all. I thought it was deer that came in and mowed them down, but a bunch of you had said that it was probably squirrels. So I don't know what it was. I was not here. I came out and the plants had literally no green on them at all. And I'm actually really surprised to see how many of them have bounced back. 
So my goal, I don't know if I'm gonna do it this fall or spring, depending on Josh and I's schedule, is to actually rip out all the strawberries from all these beds and put them in green stalks on my patio so that they are protected. So basically what our plan is, is to remove all these raised beds, remove the cinder blocks, level out the soil, seed it, and just have this be a lawn type area. I haven't thought about, where are they, right there, what I'm gonna do with those blueberry plants, if I should transplant them, or just leave them here in that cage. That works really well, it keeps the deer out, it keeps the birds out, and I was able to harvest a lot of blueberries off those blueberry plants. But we don't need this area because this is not irrigated, and I really need my gardens to be irrigated because we get no rain in the summer, and I don't have time to water, hand water. So we're just gonna have this become a nice grassy field and maybe we'll turn it into, I don't know. Because what we're thinking, we're gonna put our grapes next year. So in the spring, I wanna plant a bunch of grapes. And I just had the thought, well, maybe we could put the grapes there if we ripped out all those raised beds. But we kind of like the idea of having a flat area that has the potential to turn into something, whether Josh decides to build a shop in the future. I mean, that would be far out or I don't know, but a lot of our property is super, super hilly. Like I'm walking down a pretty steep hill and this is where we're thinking of putting the grapes next spring. We would irrigate it and maybe put some fruit trees. That's why I haven't planted my elderberry plant because I'm not sure where I wanna put it. So reference, you can kind of see where I'm standing now. We are thinking about putting grapes all along this ridge because this is a pretty steep ridge and then maybe some more fruit trees up here. We need to remove all this old deer fencing. It doesn't keep deer out. There's a big opening right there. The other side is completely open, but this is what we're thinking for future perennial fruit production is this hill right here. But Josh and I need to sit down and write that out and come up with a plan for more like permanent structures that we want. Friend, that basically concludes 2023's garden. My brain has shifted from this year's garden to next year's garden. I am not a garden planner. You've heard me say that. I don't usually plan, but I have my wheels turning for 2024's garden because this year has been so incredibly productive, blown any expectations I've had out of the water, and it's making me excited for next year's garden and the possibilities. I'm excited to get my seed catalogs in the mail this winter and look at all the new varieties and see how far we can push this garden. I want to grow more vertically. I want to grow more flowers. I want the garden to be even more beautiful than it was this year. Next year, if we can do it, and hopefully going into the fifth year gardening for me, we are just gonna continue to grow on our skills and we can make that happen. I do need to research the garlic. Big question mark there, what I should do about that garlic. And so we'll see. But I did wanna to talk to you before we end this about the landscape fabric. I have a love-dislike relationship for the landscape fabric. For things that I'm setting and forgetting all year, winter squash, summer squash, tomatoes, peppers, things like that works beautifully like a charm. For things that are fiddly like carrots and onions and maybe green beans, things that are planted really close together. Actually, no, I take that back. I really liked it for the black beans. So I like it and I don't like it. I don't like the fact that it constrains my creativity when it comes to the garden because I have to you know, create a hole for it to plant something, but it really reduced the amount of weeding I needed to do. So I liked it for that. So next year, I'm absolutely gonna be using the landscape fabric. Every single one of those beds is gonna be covered with landscape fabric over the fall and winter to protect them. And I will be using the landscape fabric next year, but really only for the things that I'm setting and forgetting. So the majority of things that I'm planting out there will have landscape fabric, but the bed that has carrots and onions probably won't have, it won't have landscape fabric but I'm gonna be moving my crops all around. So hopefully I'm not, so hopefully I'm keeping that weed pressure down by just not introducing as many weed seeds into the beds as possible from just like birds and air and wind and things like that. So that's my thought on landscape fabric. It does reduce the creativity of being out in the garden, but it reduces the amount of work you need to do when it comes to weeding. And I am really the only one that manages this, this garden with help of my parents when it comes to harvesting. And so I need to make it as efficient as possible and the landscape fabric has done that for me. So I'm gonna to continue to use it in some areas and I'm gonna to continue to not use it in other areas. And that is the beauty of your own garden is you have the prerogative, the right, the 
it's your garden, so you can do whatever you want. And I am going to choose to use it in some areas and not use it in other areas. So I'm excited for 2024's garden. I am overwhelmed and blessed with how well 2023's garden did. I just want to thank you for being here along the journey for this entire year. And hopefully you stick around for next year and we can see how we can push the abundance of this garden. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. If you want to see some more of my videos, I can pop them there. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I'm so grateful you take time out of your day to spend time with me, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.